Hey, if you're a musician, a writer, a visual artist, or any other type of creative person, uh, I have a really important message for you in this video about a stigma that has plagued creative people for decades. We're going to destroy this stigma and banish it from our lives. Are you ready? Let's do it. Hi, I'm Bob Baker, author of The Passion Principles, The Empowered Artist, The Guerrilla Music Marketing Handbook, and many other books. Welcome to my video channel where I dish out marketing and career advice for musicians, writers, visual artists, and creative entrepreneurs of all types. So if you don't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. So what am I talking about with this stigma? Well, to fully explain this, let's set aside traditional career fields for just a second. Let's talk about something else. How about gardening? And perhaps this applies to you, but have you ever like maybe planted flowers in your yard or maybe grew tomatoes or just some simple landscaping around your house? If you haven't done this yourself, which you probably have, but if you haven't, you certainly know someone who has. These are people that maybe have a green thumb or you have plants around your house or whatever. And so this is actually very common. I mean, gardening is like a huge hobby. Let's actually label somebody. Well, let's just call this gardening person who likes uh, doing stuff around their yard. Uh, let's refer to her as Aunt Louise. And we all have an Aunt Louise. Maybe you are an Aunt Louise and you just enjoy doing those gardening type of activities. Okay, so let's kind of set Louise over to the side gently here. We're going to come back to her in a minute. So let me ask you another question. Do you know people? Are you aware of people who actually make money in gardening related activities. Maybe even make a decent living doing it. And this could be like people who are who are landscapers, who are the actual, you know, workers that come in and do landscaping. There are people that maybe run landscaping companies. Even something as simple as a lawn mowing service is kind of a an offshoot of that. Or maybe people that run nurseries or those uh, you know farmers market type of things. So you hopefully would agree with me, but yes, there are people that actually have their livelihood in green things and sort of gardening related offshoots. All right, so we've established that. Now let's bring Louise back into the picture, planting flowers in her yard. How often have you heard people refer to your Aunt Louise or yourself, if you are a, uh, a gardening fan, as a starving gardener or a, oh, poor Louise, she's just a struggling gardener. You rarely if I say you never hear people make references to people that are into gardening like that, why is that? Because for some reason, this starving and struggling label has been given to creative people. You know, if someone is engaged in an art form and they've been at it for a while and they're not making a living from it or doing a whole lot with it or whatever, they're labeled as, oh, struggling or starving. Why is that reserved for creative people and not for people that are into things like gardening? The same things apply. There are a lot of people that dabble in it and it's hobbyists or they're not an amateur level just for pure joy and there are people that make their living or make extra money from it. Why is that stigma applied to certain fields in the creative arts and not to others? It's because it's a misguided myth. So don't buy into this misguided label. Now, I do think I understand why creative people are labeled in that, and it comes from what I describe as people who have mixed modes. Again, it's awesome to dabble in something for pure personal joy. It's quite another thing to uh, pursue something as a living or as some sort of a livelihood, whether that's just supplemental part-time income or full-time status. Well, I think the struggling artist stigma comes from people who have aspirations to be full-time with their art. Maybe they talk to people about these visions that they have of being an artist. However, their actions are in part-time hobby mode. What they're doing to pursue that dream is not matching up to the dream itself. They're maybe just waiting for things to happen. They're not taking the right action. They don't have the confidence or the, the self-worth to really propel themselves forward. So that's where this comes from. But the starving artist thing is just ridiculous to me because not all gardeners make money from their activities. A small percentage of all the people that are interested in gardening actually make money doing that and you don't hear a whole lot of people talking about the oh it's so tough to get into into gardening and um you better have something to fall back on. <laughs> 
don't know. I mean, this, creative people are plagued with this these crazy notions about pursuing their passion. It's perfectly all right for you to be involved in your craft in a purely personal hobby level. So many people, when you meet them, I go, what do you do? Well, I'm a writer. But then they qualify by saying, well, I don't make any money doing it. I'm just, I just write. I say, why do you even have to say that? You are a writer if you write. You're just not a full-time writer. So don't uh, delude yourself into thinking you're pursuing some bestseller status when you're just a dabbler, you know, and it's fine to dabble. Don't beat yourself up for it. Don't have to apologize for not being at a certain level. Paint just for the simple love of it. And then, of course, if you want to turn it into a career or something that supplements your income, there's steps that need to be taken to reach that status. But stop qualifying, stop feeling bad, stop buying into this struggling. Whatever you do, do not refer to yourself as a starving artist or a struggling artist or musician or songwriter or whatever. That's just demeaning. It does not serve you and give you the respect that you deserve. So in whatever mode, at whatever level you're pursuing your creativity, be happy with that and just pay attention to whether you have aspirations in one mode and actions in the other. Those things need to be in alignment. So if you're really not seriously taking the steps to be a full-time musician, artist, writer, then accept that fact and just simply enjoy it on a part-time basis. If you truly have this yearning and this desire to do your craft full-time, then your actions need to match up with it. You have to be more proactive in pursuing that goal. So I hope these random thoughts here made some sense to you and that you got something out of it. Don't buy into the stigma. Respect your Aunt Louise for the part-time gardener that she is. That's the bottom line. I hope you found this helpful, and I also hope that we can stay in touch. The best way to do that is via email. That's why I encourage you to get on the Creative Entrepreneur VIP list. It's really easy to do. Just go to PromoteYourCreativity.com. Again, that's PromoteYourCreativity.com, and I'll give you free access to my three-and-a-half-hour online video course called 30 Ways to Become an Empowered artist. That's absolutely free and you'll get some other goodies as well. Again, that's promoteyourcreativity.com. If you want to support my ongoing efforts to educate, inspire, and empower creative people around the world, please consider becoming a patron. Just go to patreon.com slash Bob Baker to find out more about that. So again, subscribe to the channel. Uh, leave a comment somewhere here to let me know your thoughts hit the like button, share this with someone who could really use this message. And I want to thank you for all you do to express your creativity and share your gifts with the world. I'm Bob Baker, saying so long for now.